the overarching purpose that we have is risk reduction. And in this case, we're trying to reduce risk uh, to storm surge inundation for the folks in the West Bank. And one of the things we're looking at is what do we do about the surge uh, for the Algiers and Harvey Canals? They allow surge right now to come into the Algiers and Harvey Canals right in the heart of a heavily populated area. And so th there's a very high risk to surge inundation for those folks. In the West Bank, the surge uh, originates in the Gulf of Mexico and comes up the Barataria Basin until it reaches our protection systems on the West Bank. We've been constructing levees and flood walls in the, on the West Bank for uh, many years now. And now that we've been given this task by Congress to provide 100-year level protection, and we're looking at various alternatives to reduce that risk and provide a better, more reliable system. The risk is the number one issue that we're looking at, but we also look at the impacts to the environment. We're dealing with some very sensitive environmental areas here. We're very close and, and may impact a Section 404C area. It's the area that uh, is south of the existing protection system along the Gulf Intercoastal Waterway. And it is adjacent to the existing Jean Lafitte National Park. It's a very pristine wetlands, and these areas are designated specifically to be untouched uh, and to be left in a very pristine state. And the, the, the requirements that we have are, 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 would be unique if we were to go into those areas. There's also cost and the schedule. All these factors have to be considered in trying to determine what the best plan is. Now that Congress has authorized this, this higher level of protection, what we've realized is in order to bring those levee heights higher, those levees become significantly wider. And widening those levees do have impacts to the adjacent businesses and residents along the canal. We had a team that did an evaluation of how the system performed. And what we've learned is if you can reduce the, the linear footage of the system that actually experiences that 100-year storm surge, you can decrease the risk or you can improve the reliability. So looking at a method to block the storm surge here versus allowing that storm surge to enter a canal and 24 miles of levee being exposed to that elevation of water is an improvement in the system. Alternative one is a floodgate in the Gulf Intracoastal Waterway. It would be located approximately one mile south of the meeting point of the Algiers and Harvey Canals in this general area. It would include a navigable floodgate, a pump station, and a bypass channel so that navigation can be maintained throughout the construction period. It would then cross the uh, Bayou Corps 404C site, which is a wetland of national significance. At this point, it would be a flood wall, specifically a concrete T-wall that would allow for drainage to try to maintain as much of the wetland function as possible. And then it would tie into the rest of the system in this area, which is the area we call the V-Lon Levee. Alternative two is similar to alternative one. It would be a navigable floodgate in the Gulf Intracoastal Waterway, about one mile south of the point where the Algiers and the Harvey Canal meet. It would consist of a navigable floodgate, a pump station, and a bypass channel. Instead of crossing the 404C area, this alternative would include the construction of a flood wall along the west bank of the Intracoastal Waterway, along the perimeter of the 404C area, it would cross the Estelle pump station outfall canal and then tie into the system near the Estelle pump station and then continue south toward the VLAN levee and tie into the remaining portions of the system. Alternative three would put a navigable floodgate in the Algiers canal right at the mouth of the canal where it meets the intercoastal waterway. It would include the navigable floodgate, a pump station, and it would tie into the flood walls that are being constructed along the east bank of the Harvey Canal. This alternative would require us to do additional work at the existing gate at the Lapalco Bridge. Um, we'd have to raise the elevation of that gate as well as the flood walls that are existing at the Cousins Pump Station and its discharge wall. 
We'd also have to enlarge and widen the levees along the west bank of the Harvey Canal. Alternative number four, which we call parallel protection, would require us to raise levees, construct flood walls, replace flood walls that are parallel to the Algiers and Harvey Canal. So we would have to raise the levees along both banks of the Algiers Canal, provide protection at the existing pump stations on the canal. The flood walls that are currently under construction along the east bank of Harvey Canal or being built to a height that's sufficient to provide this level of protection. We'd have to do improvements to the existing gate at the Lapelco Bridge. And then we'd have to raise the levees along the west bank of the Harvey Canal, all the way to this point, and then tying into the system at the Vilan levee. Alternative four requires a lot of levee construction, a lot of structural work at pump stations, and the relocation or the displacement of many businesses and houses. It's also the most costly alternative of the four. This is going to be the front line defense for the West Bank as far as storm surge is concerned. We've got to find a way to do this. Do it right. This is our one chance, maybe the last chance we have, to get this done in a way that people are going to feel confidence in. We need to move ahead with this system and make sure that we do the best job that we can. We're working with the local officials, the local government officials in three parishes, Orleans, Jefferson, Clackamas, to develop these plans. Uh, we're working with uh, the levy districts in the state of Louisiana, federal agencies, state agencies. We do not want to make a recommendation that is going to be objectionable to the folks in this area. We want to make a recommendation that is going to be acceptable and one that they will endorse. So this is a, a unified effort. So as we go through this process, we will vet all the alternatives and ultimately we will make a decision as to what we believe the proper alternative is. That alternative will go out for public review for 30 days. And at the end of that 30 days, if there are no uh, Further comments are nothing that we cannot resolve, and that decision will be sent to the commander of the New Orleans District for a decision. We're really hoping to make a decision by the fall of uh, 2008 so we can move forward with uh, construction, hopefully in early 2009. We take this responsibility very seriously um, to reduce the risk to that populace, to improve the reliability of the system is our number one priority and number one goal, and that's what Congress has asked us to do, and that is what we intend to do.